Hey folks, welcome back to the Four String Strummer, the channel that's all about ukuleles. We're playing old songs, learning new songs, talking technique, and tonight we're going to talk a little bit about the instruments. In particular, I'd like to just talk a little bit about baritone ukulele tonight. It's um, kind of the uh, instrument that's not a, quite a guitar, and a lot of people look at it's not quite a ukulele. So what is it, right? And, and, and why should you have one? I think everybody should have a baritone ukulele because um, they're different. Okay, and it will expand your uh, playing, it'll expand your playlist, uh, it'll expand your fun. Okay, and I'll just show you why. So, a couple of the differences with the baritone versus some of the other sizes, whether it's soprano or tenor or concert. Generally speaking, the difference is in the scale length. So that's from here to here. If you look at a soprano, the smallest ukulele their scale length is about 13 inches um, the concert is about 15 inches the tenor is about 17 inches and when you get into the baritone you're up in that sort of 20 inch area this one's about 20 and a half okay you end up with a bigger soundboard as well and generally your tuning now changes okay so if you're coming from a guitar background this is basically a guitar without the two bass strings. So you're missing your E and your A. You've got D, G, B, no, uh, E, A, D, B, G, E. Yeah, D, B, G, E. I had to think about that for a minute. Um, and you've got a low string up here, not a high string, not my dog has fleas. It's, okay, they go in, in sequence. Okay, in pitch. Um, so, you'd end up with a different sounding instrument. There's, there's songs that you'll play on this that you won't play on your regular ukulele, um, regular, um, and there's songs on, like on my tenor that I would play on that that I would never play on this. They just don't suit this, the sound of this instrument, I don't think. Um, so these ones, you'll, you're gonna find it. It's got that much more guitar-like, bassier, fuller um, sound, maybe a bit more resonance as well because you've got the larger soundboard as well, uh, which is kind of nice. You can play different things like um, if you wanted to kind of punch something out a little bit more. Well, there is a house in New Orleans. They call you're not going to have that same kind of boom with your high G tenor ukulele. The other nice thing that I find with a baritone is you can use a capo more, uh, more effectively, I guess. You can use a capo on a um, tenor ukulele or concert or whatever. Um, I don't. Myself, I know some people do. I just find that it gets so cramped. Once you start to get up into the the third fret to me forget it I don't go above the second fret with a capo on a tenor ukulele I just find it gets so cramped in here you're all kind of hunched up and for me it just doesn't work some people like it and giddy up if that's what works for you um, just I think one of the advantages of this is that you end up with a lot more room on the fretboard so you can if you like to sing while you play you can use this greatly to your advantage. You can get the exact key that you want, if you're not familiar with capos, um, and you don't have to relearn the song in a different key, right? So now if I'm playing House of the Rising Sun where I'm starting in A minor, now I'm maybe in B minor or I'm in C minor or whatever, and I can just uh, uh, get that by moving this capo up and down the fretboard. Well, it is a house in New Orleans, much nicer for me. They call the rising sun, and it's been Um, 
So again, not that one's better than the other, they're just different animals. And this is a song I wouldn't normally play on my tenor. I just don't get that bright sound out of it for me, okay? Um, in the same way, like coming from the guitar, one of the cool things I really noticed that I really love about ukulele is that it opened up all this different kind of music for me that I didn't normally play on the guitar. On the guitar, I play, you know, folk music. I play um, bluegrass. I like to do flat picking and things like that. And I don't do that on a ukulele. You just, it just doesn't work, right? It's just you don't have those big, bassy, dreadnought kind of sounds that you can do on a, on a ukulele. And that's cool, right? It's just, But it opened up all this, like I'm playing stuff from the 30s and the 40s, like kind of swing, kind of jazzy sort of stuff on the ukulele. I love it, right? And that's where this is nice as well, because it's going to open up another door for you if you're a ukulele player. Um, so anyway, it's it's really cool. And I don't think that it's it's necessarily one or the other. Should I buy a baritone or should I buy a, a, a tenor? Buy them both. I mean, I hate to just say that, but the price of ukuleles now is such that you can buy a pretty decent instrument. I mean, I'm not talking, you know, solid koa and, and you know, handmade or anything, but you can buy a pretty decent instrument. Like this one was, um, you know, it's got a solid top, laminate rosewood sides and backs, and I think I might have paid, I don't know, about 200 bucks for it, and that's Canadian dollars. So you can buy a pretty good instrument for about $150 American if you live in the States. Um, and you'll get your money back out of it too, I think. You know, if you decide, ah, you know, it's really not for me, I don't play it enough, I'm gonna sell it. Man, you'll put it on Craigslist or Kijiji or whatever and, and it'll go. You'll get your money back out of it. But I, I think you're gonna love it. Um, I get frustrated because at one time, I was buying all these ukuleles and I had all kinds of them and it was just, silly in a way because I wasn't playing them all even you know what I've got here uh, at least they're kind of different you know I've got a banjo ukulele I've got now a, a little travel ukulele that's very thin I've got a concert one that one I I kept because both my daughter and I had the same one so it's kind of got some sentimental value and but it's got electronics in it right and that other one over there that's actually my son's ukulele but it's a cutaway and it's got uh, it's got electronics in it and it's a tenor size as well right and then I have my my other one, that uh, my favorite one there, um, that's all koa. But to have just a whole whack of instruments that I'm not really playing that much, and none of them are really that much different, to me it just didn't make sense. So I sold a whole bunch of them, and I've kept stuff that's different now, and uh, and I find that it's uh, it's a little bit more interesting for me. So give it a try, see what you think. Um, like I say, you know, Cal is a good brand, but there's all kinds of them out there. Uh, that you can buy now online you can get there's aquat there's enya there's all kinds of people making um, different instruments and using different kinds of woods and things like that as well right so just jump in and give it a try all of your your chord shapes and everything that you know from ukulele will work on on the baritone um, they just result in a different chord so i'll just show you how that works this is a G, a G chord, that shape, on a standard ukulele. When you switch to a baritone, that's now a D chord. And the reason is that basically, a regular ukulele is way up here, okay? So now when I play this up here, that's a G, okay? So, because here's D, uh, E, F, G. And that's how it works. Okay, and that's why they change. So as you move down, just imagine you're adding on to your, your neck on your tenor, okay? That's one way to think about it. So it won't take you long to, to get used to the fact that when it says in your book, D, you're not playing this, you're now playing this. And if you're playing, if you're coming from a guitar side of things, um, then it's, it's basically just thinking, oh, D is D. G is just imagine there are two more strings up there, right? So you're playing your G with just that one finger now. If you're on ukulele, that's normally a C, but there you go. Now it's a G, right? That's normally an F on a smaller ukulele, on a baritone, that's a C chord. Think about it if you're a guitarist, you're just putting your extra finger up there, right? And you've got two more strings to play with, okay? So it's a pretty easy transition from one to the other. Um, but like I say, I think the biggest thing you're going to find is it's going to open up your playlist big time and um, probably your technique a little bit too. It will change and it will develop 
playing the baritone as well as the uh, as a standard ukulele. Okay, so that's it for tonight, folks. I just wanted to go over it because I think it's uh, it's an important uh, it's an important subject, and I see lots of questions about it. And I think, man, if you got the opportunity to jump in on a decent instrument, go for it. You will not regret it. Okay, keep smiling, keep strumming. Until I see you next time, have fun. Bye for now.